The United Nations envoy Hans Grunberg expresses concern about the latest development in Yemen. The United States launches new waves of airstrikes on Houthi positions in Yemen for the second day. Israeli occupation war on Gaza enters the 99th day with the death toll of civilians on the rise. Good evening. Welcome to Yemen Today News. I am Abir Ali. U.S. President Joe Biden said that the Houthi militia is a terrorist organization, warning that Washington would respond to the Houthis if they continue their behavior. For his part, a U.S. National Security Council spokesman announced that Washington is considering returning the Houthi militia to the list of foreign terrorist organizations. The spokesman added that they have not decided whether the previous decision to remove the Houthis from the list would be canceled or not, but they are considering it seriously. The special envoy Hans Gramberg expressed his concern about the recent developments in Yemen. Gramberg is a published statement reiterated the Secretary General's call on all parties concerned to avoid any steps that would worsen the situation in Yemen, escalate the threat to maritime trade routes, or increase regional tensions at his critical time. He stressed the need to protect Yemeni civilians and preserve the progress made regarding peace efforts since 2022 tours. U.S. Ambassador in the U.N. said the strikes against the Houthi targets were disrupted the group's attacks against commercial shipping in the Red Sea. The U.S. diplomat added that the strikes were necessary, noting that they were consistent with international law and in exercise of the U.S. inherent rights of self-defense, informing the Security Council opens a new window of allies' reasons for the strikes. She said that no one is immune, including Russia, from the attacks preparated by Houthis against ships and vessels. The British Maritime Trade Operations Authority announced that a missile had been fired at a ship sailing southeast of Aden. The authority said that the missile fell at the distance of between 400 and 500 meters from the ship, indicating that there were no injuries or damage. According to the authority, the ship continued sailing towards its destination and that investigations are still underway to uncover the circumstances of the incident. Chairman of Egyptian Suez Canal Authority negated news about suspending navigation in the canal as a result of developments in Bab el Mandeb region. The Egyptian official explained that the Suez Canal provides its navigation surfaces normally and the navigation movement in the canal will witness the crossing of 44 ships from both directions. He stressed the Suez Canal Authority's keenness to open direct channels of communication with companies and shipping lines and joint coordination in the interest of serving the shipping community. Today, the United States launched second waves of strikes on Houthi locations in Sana'a. Observers think that the continuation of such strikes would likely endanger the peace efforts in the country. This report has more. The U.S. military struck Yemen in a location that they determined was endangering commercial vessels in the Red Sea. According to two U.S. officials who spoke anonymously to the Associated Press about an operation that had not yet been publicly announced, U.S. Central Command stated the Navy destroyer USS Kearney used Tomahawk Clan attack missiles to launch a follow-up attack on a specific Houthi raider site. It comes after the first day of strikes by the U.S. and the U.K., which hit 28 locations and more than 60 targets. The U.S. concluded that the additional location, a radar site, still posed a risk to marine traffic. In addition, U.S. Navy warned American vessels to avoid areas around Yemen and the Red Sea and the Gulf of Aden for the next 72 hours after the U.S. and the U.K. launched multiple airstrikes against the Houthi rebels. The warning was issued in a notice to shippers as Yemen's Houthis threatened fears retaliation for the U.S.-led strikes. 
Officials from the White House and the U.S. military stated that they anticipated a counterattack from the Houthis. Moreover, President Joe Biden issued a warning saying that more strikes might be coming. Following the Houthis' attacks on civilian vessels, the White House announced in November that it was considering redesignating them as a terrorist organization. In 2021, the administration formally revoked former President Donald Trump's designation of the Houthis as a foreign terrorist organization. The United States announced sanctions on two companies on behalf of a financial facilitation network for the Houthis. The U.S. Treasury Department said that it imposed sanctions on a Hong Kong-based company and a UAE-based company that shipped Iranian goods on behalf of a Houthi financial facilitation network. The Treasury Department added that one of the tankers owned by the Hong Kong-based company, Limited, shipped Iranian goods to China on behalf of financial intermediary, while another tanker worked to hide the origin of the goods using fraudulent document. Palestinian sources reported that the bodies of 20 people were picked up following an Israeli bombing that targeted a house in Gaza City. The Palestinian news agency also reported that at least 10 Palestinians were killed and others were injured in an Israeli airstrike east of the city of Rafah. Palestinian sources added that a number of deaths in Gaza rose to more than 23,000 and the wounded to more than 60,000 as a result of Israeli bombing since the start of the war. The Israeli army carried out a storming in the center of the northern occupied West Bank. A military bulldozer accompanied by a troop carrier arrived at the gates of the camp and the snipers occupied several buildings, including the rehabilitation center for disabled and the club area. This is not the first time the Israeli has stormed the camp as it carried out similar operations, which resulted in a number of deaths among Palestinians. Israeli occupation aggression on Gaza enters its 99th day with the death of toll of civilians otherwise. Although there were hopes that Blinken visit to the region would make Israel scale down its offensive on Gaza, nothing of that has materialized. This report has more. The Israeli army continues its operations in the Gaza Strip, which again faces a complete communications blackout and a critical humanitarian situation on the 99th day of the war. Since Friday, Houthi sites in Yemen have been subjected to strikes by the United States of America and the UK. The US Army launched a new strike in Sana'a on a Houthi base, which threatens maritime traffic through attacks on ships in the Red Sea. On the ground, bombing continued at night in the Gaza Strip, while the United Nations accused the Israeli army of limiting the arrival of fuel supplies, especially to hospitals. Also, Palestinian telecommunications company announced that communication services have been completely cut off in the Gaza Strip. The Palestinian Red Crescent Society published a statement in which it stressed that cutting off communications increases the challenges facing Red Crescent crews in providing their ambulance services in reaching the injured as quickly as possible. In addition, running out of fuel led to the stop of the main electricity generator at Al-Aqsa Hospital in central Gaza Strip. Approximately 85% of the 2.3 million Palestinians living in Gaza have left their homes. According to the UN, there are 1.9 million displaced Gazans. They have also experienced acute shortages of gasoline, food, water, and medical supplies since Israel imposed a siege on the city. In the International Court of Justice, South Africa has been strongly critical of Israel's military operations in Gaza. South African lawyers requested that the court order an immediate halt to Israeli military operations in the besieged coastal territory, which is home to 2.3 million Palestinians. A decision on that request will most likely take weeks, and it's unclear whether Israel will comply with any court orders. 2023 has been a year of enormous suffering, violence, and climate chaos. Humanity is in pain. Our planet is in peril. 2023 is the hottest year on record. People are getting crushed by growing poverty and hunger. Wars are growing in number and ferocity and trust is in short supply. But pointing fingers and pointing guns lead nowhere. Humanity is strongest when we stand together. 2024 must be a year for rebuilding trust and restoring hope. We must come together across divides for shared solutions, for climate action, 
for economic opportunity and a fairer global financial system that delivers for all. Together we must stand up against the discrimination and hatred that are poisoning relations between countries and communities. And we must make sure new technologies, such as artificial intelligence, are a force for good. The United Nations will keep rallying the world for peace, sustainable development and human rights. Let us resolve to make 2024 a year of building trust and hope in all that we can accomplish together. I wish you a happy and peaceful new year. Yemeni diplomatic sources revealed that the second free flight to evacuate Yemeni nationals stranded in Sudan will operate next Wednesday. The expatriate affairs attache at the Yemeni embassy in Khartoum announced the start of the registration of Yemeni nationals to escape the military confrontations taking place in Sudan. The official added that the second free flight is scheduled to depart from Port Sudan Airport next Wednesday and will arrive at Maha Airport on the same day. The Houthi militia assaulted women in the central prison in Abu Ghabarat. Informed sources reported that Houthi elements, including women known as Zainabiyat, severely beat the females, protested inmates and transferred them to solitary confront cells. The sources indicated that the Houthi attack on female enemies at a facility came as a suppression of their protest. Violent confrontations broke out between the leaders of the Houthi militia on the Dalak front. Field sources explained that a Houthi leader was killed as part of the intense internal conflicts between the ranks of the militia on the same front. Violent clashes took place with various light and heavy weapons against the backdrop of flaming internal conflict between the militia leaders. Coming up in the news. A decade of conflict in Yemen has aggravated displacement crisis in the country. Ben Siab, the Shatat, the Anir Siab, the Roha Anir Kuran, how was you other? Rowah Siab, when he's a leha, Maawilan. Ukara at in the shower. والله ان احنا نكره جل المطر يخسع لنا البطانيه يخسع الفراش يخسع الجماش مسمر براده خاسع احنا وجهالنا فالماوى الانتقالي هذا الكنتيره جعلتهم يعيشوا في استقرار للمستفيدين من ناحيه سواء من ناحيه الامطار او لا من ناحيه العواصف والرياح والرملي بما انه عندنا هنا في مارب الرياح بتكون شديده Welcome back. After 10 years of displacement, Yemen's internally displaced people long to return to their former homes. But with a violent conflict raging around them and an economy in collapse, many have given up on ever going back to their homes. This report has more. For displaced people in Yemen, memories of their original homes are deeply ingrained in their minds. But after 10 years of displacement, many have lost hope of returning to their homes, surrounded by a brutal war and a collapsing economy. Two million displaced people fled the hell of the Houthi war to Ma'rib Governorate. Distributed among 204 camps on the outskirts of Ma'rib, they hope to return home when the war ends. However, the reality of the situation remains much different, as they face an unknown future that does not inspire hope of return. We'd hoped the war would end after a year or two. However, we are now a decade into this conflict and conditions are dire. We've been through a lot, including flash floods and hurricanes. Our conditions are horrid. We don't have any beds or trapolins. When rains hail down, we're exposed to the elements. We have absolutely nothing. Displacement is exhausting, and we just hope to return home. 
An estimated 4.5 million, 14% of the population, are currently displaced, most of whom have been displaced multiple times over a number of years. Natural disasters and climate-induced events, such as drought and flooding, are also key drivers of displacement and have heightened existing needs. A decade into displacement, humanitarian needs are likely to hold steady and the resilience of vulnerable populations to decrease as a result of the ongoing breakdown of basic services and the fragility of Yemen's economy. One of the pillars of the historic Heist Castle, located south of Hodeida government, collapsed. The repeated act attacks on the ancient Heist Castle led to the fall of the pillar, located to the northwest of the castle building, near which a sewage pad and a water tank were recently built. These repeated attacks come from the people and neighbors, ignoring the historical importance of this archaeological landmark, whose roots are linked to the depth of the Yemeni history. This is what remained from the ancient Hayes Castle. We warned a lot against the existence of water tank near the castle, and its leakage has destroyed the foundations of the building. This came as a harsh destiny to our history, which many generations have witnessed. Areas controlled by the Houthi militia are witnessing an oil derivatives crisis hours after American British raids. Gaza stations refrained from selling while queues of cars were seen lining up in front of Gaza stations, waiting for the turn. Economic sources expected that the prices of oil derivatives would witness a noticeable rise with a shortage in supply and a rise in demand. On Friday, oil prices rose briefly as an increasing number of oil tankers derived a course from the Red Sea following overnight air and sea strikes by the U.S. and Britain on Houthi targets in Yemen after attacks on shipping by the Iran-backed group. This report has more. On Thursday night, U.S. airstrikes against Houthi targets in Yemen exacerbated an existing struggle over a shipping route with enormous implications for oil prices and inflation. The military action, conducted in collaboration with the U.K., was launched in response to a month-long series of attacks on Red Sea cargo ships by Iran-backed Houthi rebels. The U.S. strike might create an increase in oil prices and inflation if it sparks a larger escalation of the Gaza war, causing supply chain problems and spurring price hikes for many critical items. Oil prices rose 3% in early trading on Friday, owing in part to concern over such a scenario. The immediate impact of the attack appears notable but limited, analysts have said, since many of the major shipping companies had already diverted the routes in response to the threat posed by the Houthis. Since October, Houthi militia have launched over 100 attacks targeting at least 10 merchant vessels, according to the Pentagon. The Houthis have targeted commercial ships traveling through the Red Sea as they approach the Suez Canal, which the U.S. Naval Institute says facilitates roughly 12% of global shipping traffic. Freight redirected from the Suez Canal often goes around the southern tip of Africa, adding around 30% to the journey's length. Longer routes mean fewer ships are available to transport products at any given moment, putting pressure on the supply of ships. Some observers noted that the trade interruption thus far may have little or no effect on U.S. pricing because transportation expenses constitute just a small portion of an item's cost. However, an escalation of the Middle East conflict would drastically increase the impact on oil prices and inflation. Here is a reminder of the main headlines. The United Nations envoy Hans Grandbury expresses concern about the latest development in Yemen. The United States launches new waves of airstrikes on the Houthi positions in Yemen for the second day. Israeli occupation war on Gaza enters the 99th day with the death toll of civilians on the rise. This is the end of the news. Thank you for streaming with us. It was Abiraleh.